Welcome back to Rednecks Dirty Hands. I'm Pete, and today, what are we doing today? Oh, hold on, I got a whiz. Ski whiz, that is. That's right. 1972 Massey Ferguson Ski Whiz. It's like it's tractor week up in here. Last week I had that uh, 82 John Deere Liquifier 440. That was a sweet little unit. If you hadn't seen that video, maybe go back and check that out. She's a good one. But uh, now, this week, I got the uh, Massey Ferguson Ski Whiz 1972 300S, I think this one is. So, uh, yeah, I must be listening to too much country music or something, you know. She thinks my tractor's sexy, just not enough to stay. It's just me and my beer now, even the dog ran away. <laughs> Gotta love that good old country music. Let's check this thing out. Discovery Channel has Shark Week. We got Tractor Week. This thing, 1972 Ski Whiz. Beauty. That is one bad mother. Oh, no, wait, not mother. <laughs> Massey Ferguson. No, that's the other thing. I like how they got the Ski Whiz written. It's like the old school comical G Whiz. She's a Ski Whiz, buddy. The uh, thing's nice, it's neat and complete, man. Like, it's pretty much all there, solid. Uh, the windshield, it's more like a case of beer on Friday night. We got one, but she's half gone. We're gonna need another one of those. But uh, other than that, I mean, yeah, this thing is, uh, it's a survivor. Gas tank on the back. It's got the typical missing the plastic cover and looks like the hole. Can we see through there? Oh yeah, can see some daylight through there. That's no good. So we'll definitely have to do a uh, drain on that. But uh, the fella, nice guy, Ed. He's one of our subscribers, brought this down. He saw the video of the John Deere and all that and wondered if we can get this old tractor manufacturer <laughs> sled going. And hey, why not? You know what, we'll take a look at it. But uh, I can't believe how solid this thing is. Like, yeah, I guess you could tell it's built by a tractor manufacturer because the bracketry on this thing is pretty heavy there's a lot going on down in here all the bogey wheels it almost looks like somebody did a bit of a restoration on her and she's looking pretty good got her sitting up on a jack stand there even the snow flap ski was nice if it wasn't for that little rub she'd be mint but uh, the track on this thing is like I don't know, it looks brand new. Like, I don't, like, you can't get tracks for enticers or bravos, but, and all the bogey wheels, like, that's all your suspension in here. It just has all the arms and springs for your bogey wheels, and they just pivot up in here, so you could, you could run this thing wherever you want, man. Like, just look at the thickness of the tunnel. This is all steel, and, you know, like, that doesn't even flex or move. All the bracketry for the back axle and the rear suspension's all like one eighth steel plate. She is heavy duty. But I mean, even though she's all solid steel, it's heavy built and all that, it's still surprisingly pretty light. Like that's way lighter than the T-CAD or the Sidewinder. Like that's not so bad if you get stuck with one of these. The stance on this thing is kind of unusual. I like it. It's like an old gasser. She's high in the front and low in the back, ready for the, the transfer. Dangle those skis, plow right past the competition. <laughs> but I do think this thing would be tippier than a cow sleeping. You know, like, look at the... What do we got? Outside to outside. 31 inches. Like, that would fit right through the door into the living room there and park that right in the house. The old ZRT and the Thundercat over there. Thundercat's like 48 inches outside to outside. That one's like 46. Yeah, 31. Uh, it's probably why that windshield busted. This thing probably roll right over as soon as you go to turn. Like, this thing must be super tippy because it doesn't take much to... Oh, <laughs> Sweet in the mountains through the trees. Oh, it sucks that we don't really have any snow outside right now, but it's probably a good thing because if I get this thing up and running, guaranteed I'd probably roll it and wreck it on him. So, <laughs> like the weather here is messed up. We got nothing. I mean, the pond's almost <laughs> opened up, melted. Real. Yeah, our winter is like over. 
That's why we're working on a tractor. Now, well, some people think these things are kind of ugly looking, but I don't know. I kind of, I kind of like it. I think it'd be sweet if it was sitting a bit lower and had a wider stance on those skis and they were pushed back a little bit, stop it from being so tippy. But uh, other than that, I like the two headlights. I like the grill structure, that little, <laughs> the raised hood with the vents in it there. They had some style back in the day. What do we got? Massey Ferguson 300S. This thing is a single cylinder. I think it's like a 295, so that's why they class it as a uh, 300. But let's pop the hood and take a look. Oh, yeah. This thing is, uh, this is in really good shape. Like the hood, there's no cracks or pieces missing. 1972. It's even got electric start. No battery in it, but uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. That bungee cord would be for, ha, that's probably the battery holder. What do we got here? Rockwell, J-L-O, she's a Jello. Nice one, Jello, J-E-L-L-O. She's not stuck, that's a bonus. So I think we will uh, give her a once over. It's got the old school Tillerson uh, carburetor on there. That carburetor there's got all the diaphragms and everything in the bottom of her there so that's the fuel pump and everything so we'll see if we can find a rebuild kit for that and then uh do a compression test on it looks like somebody brazed up and there was a leak on here oh and there's oh signs of oil might have a head gasket issue we might have to uh, pop that off we'll check the compression first clean the fuel system See if we can get a rebuild kit for that carburetor, throw a spark plug in her, and then, uh, yeah, we'll see if we can get this sucker going. This thing is incredibly well built. I mean, it doesn't have as much style as the John Deere did, you know, it's just got like a stamp steel kind of chain case cover where that John Deere had the nice, you know, looking with the JD logo and everything cast right into the cover but i mean this thing here she is built solid like a tractor i mean like the steering arms are nice and solid and there is no play in this thing the only thing i don't like about it is that's sitting straight there right now you turn the handlebars and she just flops right over and the whole every time you turn it's sitting on flat ground the whole snowmobile is just like shifting it's like i don't know Ugh. You can see the front end <laughs> moves like a couple inches left or right every time you turn, but I don't know. Be interesting to see how it feels going down the trail, if we could ride it down the trail. Yeah, so there is a big puke stain on the bottom side of the hood there, so I don't know if that's a result of whatever was the muffler leak in there, or if that's from the head issue here, or maybe it was just spraying it out of the exhaust and getting on the head there. So we'll definitely have to investigate that. But first things first, first we'll pull the plug out and give this old girl a compression test and see what we're working with first. So, ooh. That spark plug is drier than a popcorn fart. A little bit dirty, but doesn't look too fouled or nothing. She's old school. She's got the big bottom on. Fat bottom girls, you get my sled running. Now, I have absolutely no idea what the compression in this is supposed to be, but we definitely want to see more than 90. Five poles, wide open throttle, and we are at, oh, holy Jesus. Uh, yeah, that's like 160. Uh, this thing, that's, that's really good. <laughs> so maybe that's not a head gasket leak with all the oil. Maybe that is coming all out of the exhaust there. Either that or when she gets hot, maybe she's leaking out there. I don't know, but that's, uh, that's surprising. That's that's a lot of compression for an old one longer. Oh yeah, it's got compression, but doesn't have spark. Keep on. Come on, baby. Oh yeah. 
don't know if you can see that there. Nice one. Two for two. Now, on to the fuel. I've never seen the single cylinder and a sled mounted this way before. Like uh, I've had the old Olympics and even old errands and all that where the carburetor would be on this side here and you'd have the dial for the choke and all that. But on this one with the Rockwell, they got the carburetor mounted right on the front. And if you look at the grill on the front, it's got all the perforated holes. So that's like, that's ram air. There's no air filter or nothing on there. It's just direct whoop, air right in there. More power, baby. I like how they think there. And then this side, the exhaust is on this side, and this screen here is all perforated, so you get the airflow there, so you got your ram air intake there, and your nut warmer here is <laughs> right this around Christmas time, roasting the chestnuts, baby. So here we have our Tillotson made Toledo, Ohio carburetor. You know, these are good old carburetors. They're handy because that there on the bottom, that's your uh, fuel pump built right in, so yeah. Before I took it all apart, I checked around Royal Distributing. They sell uh, rebuild kits for, well, they got two Tillotson rebuild kits. So I ordered both just in case. And this one here, the Vertex, it uh, rebuild kit. And you can see there it says uh, HR. And I mean, on the top of here, we got part number starting with HR. So hopefully that's the one we need so yeah we'll uh, peel this sucker apart check out those diaphragms and everything inside the uh, pump there clean everything blow everything out put her back together and uh yeah we'll drain that fuel get her going we'll pull the uh, screws out of here i guess i should note the orientation of this fella so maybe i'll grab a sharpie and mark that just so when i put it back together It'll be pointing in the same direction. Okay, little screen in there, little cork gasket, tiny little mesh screen, kind of rusty looking. Okay, all the screws are out, so, I mean, might be a good idea to take pictures of it all before you take it all apart. Whoa, somebody's already, uh, Somebody's already put a kit in here. Yeah. Well, that's got a little bit of a something going on there. Something was in there and rubbed that fella. Just gonna lay those upside down over there. And we'll check the, uh, pull this little screw out, get the needle out of there. Just as a little screw, pinching down. The bar, oh, come here, you. The little rod there that holds that guy. And there's a little spring that goes underneath it. And then the needle should just drop out of there. Come on. There's the needle. And then we could probably, I do believe that seat unthread so we can change that seat too so we'll do that 5 16 it's got to be a pretty narrow one though to fit in there my other 5 16 socket wouldn't fit in the hole but yeah that came out no problem so the kit gives you a new seat for the and a new uh, needle uh, it's just got the flat bottom 5 16 or 8 mil head drop that sucker down in there crank her up just like so it also gives us new high and low uh, screws so basically same thing as a air mixture screw and all that screw them in first count how many they go in and then pull them out so on the low we got half oh and a quarter so three quarter so pull this one out and you got a little washer and an o-ring came out with that fella then the high one half one and a half so one and a half on that guy one and a half three quarter same thing little 
little tiny washer and an o-ring there and then i do believe they give you everything in the kit to replace all this so let's just double check and make sure nothing else hanging out in there no nope, we're good and the kit gives you these new plugs here i'll show you they're little soft uh, metal plugs so basically to remove the old ones all you really got to do is just give them a little little tap in they're soft so a sharp little screwdriver or something just to deform them and out they come like so we got a jet down in here so let's pull that sucker out And that's the jet that was down inside underneath that little plug. I'll clean this all out, blow all the holes and everything out. When you go to put them in, these little, the new uh, covers they give you, they've got a little, they're concaved on one side, bumped up on the other side with the logo there. So you just set them down in. They fit nice and perfect. And then you just grab like a, a round punch, a little bit smaller than the size of the hole there, and you just give it a light little tap and it spreads it out, wedges it in there, seals it up, tickety-boo. And they give you uh, <laughs> way more gaskets than you need, but, I mean, there's one, two, three, four, yeah, there's there's a few in there, so. These ones, looks like some, this hasn't been done that long ago, but, they're pretty firm, like this one here, here's the same, you know, that's nice and floppy, soft. This one here, pretty rigid. Like, look at it. So, maybe that's part of the issue, maybe she wasn't pumping the way it should. So, we'll take all those plates apart. And then basically all you gotta do is you just take one section apart, make clean both sides kind of deal, match it up with one from the kit, and just stack them together. Make sure, like I said, take pictures of everything. Before you take it all apart, get it laying all over them and start scratching it, being like, oh geez. Now I gotta find a new carburetor because I got no idea how this goes back together. Just take pictures, take your time, you know, match them up one by one, and you should be good. Now they got these little plugs out. This one here's got a bunch of tiny little holes and I broke or lost my tiny little pilot drill bit uh, that would fit in there and then a bunch of you guys had mentioned about uh, the torch tip uh, cleaners working pretty good for those so I went out I bought a, uh, a kit and it does work perfect these there's like one two three four five little holes in here or something and that fits in there just beauty so yeah thanks for the tip there oh yeah Beauty. I blew and cleaned everything out. I've got the uh, two screws back in and set to where they were. So then you just take these uh, little steel, or I think they're aluminum or whatever, soft metal plugs. And you just set them down in the hole. Make sure they're seated all the way. And then you just take a little tiny punch don't have to smash it, don't drive her. <laughs> Just uh, give her a tap. Just to flatten it out. Same with the other one. We're doing it right in the center, that way it... Oh, carburetor's moving on me. Just like so. And then for the needle, we just take that little screw that holds the uh, rod, get it started in there anyway. You get a new spring, stick that. There's a little indent there. Oh, almost shot that sucker. Like so. Hook your uh, new needle into the holder here. Put the rod through.
Drop the needle down in there. Just like so. Tighten up the screw. Don't gotta crank the crap out of it, but then that way, boop, 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 boop. That's lifting the needle. Perfect. Ooh, even got a sticker with it, nice. Now we just gotta figure out all of our gaskets. We got to rebuild all these diaphragms and we'll do it one by one, you know, so we don't mix them all up. But like I said, take pictures just in case. Now it looks like somebody had done this, you know, it doesn't look that old, but she is dry and rigid, like that doesn't move at all. Now even if this had been done a while ago with the gas and all that, it can dry these out, harden them up so it doesn't pump the way it should. This here, that's the new one from the kit, and look at that, that's like a, that's a floppy burger from McDonald's right there. Whereas this one, yeah, stiff as a board. So we just gotta go through our pile, find all the pieces we need, that looks like that fellow there and that fellow there. You can see this one has a rigid uh, gasket around the outside of it and then the softer diaphragm one. So I usually keep a razor blade on hand for separating in case you get any that are stuck together and then you just keep separating the plates. Give it a good little cleaning, you know, go one by one until we get them all replaced. Like this one here, like look at that. I don't know if you can see that but there's i don't know looks like something got stuck in there or like that that mark's not supposed to be there and this thing here same thing it's solid so we'll get some nice soft diaphragms and everything in there and this thing should be just a pumping so i got the outer ring and the floppy disk here just like the old computer set them up so then i'll just take the old one off, put that aside, lay her on kind of where, like so, then flip her upside down, move on to the next one. Now we gotta find one that looks like that. I'm sure there's one in the pile here somewhere. Just like that. Now you can see, same thing. See how rigid that is? Here's the replacement one. See how flexible that is? That's what we want. We got all our gaskets all in there. It's all stacked back exactly where it was. I've got the uh, Sharpie marks I put on it to line everything up. The only thing we didn't get new in the kit was a new uh, little steel mesh screen that goes in here. So we'll just clean out that one, reuse it. And then we got a new gasket for the plate. We'll stick that guy back on. But first we'll bolt all these plate sections down. Just like anything else, when you bolt her down, just do like a crisscross pattern and go nice and easy. You don't want to crank these too uh, tight. They are small little screws, but we'll just go nice and easy and even. Keep switching end for end until we get it nice and even, snug her down. We'll put the top plate back on, or bottom plate I guess it is, with the fuel line. And then we'll stick her back on the motor. And just like so, she's ready to go. Look at all the extra gaskets they give you in the kit. I guess there's multiple variations of plates or whatever for the carburetors. You know, I've been stung by Royal Distributing a few times in the past, but this time they came through. Had every little bit and piece we needed for this carburetor. And you know, 1972, pick up the phone, call up Royal, you still get a rebuild kit for it. So nice one. Got the carburetor back on and you've only got a couple inches in between here and it's blocked. You can't get a socket on there. You can't get a wrench on that angle. So I had to chop one of my old half inch wrenches and so I could fit that wrench in between the carburetor and the motor. Get those nice and snug, get in there with a pair of pliers or whatever and crank that nice and tight. I tell you, cutting the wrench is a little more difficult. You know, they're hardened uh, tool steel or whatever. I think it's time to change the blade on the old bandsaw there, because it's about as sharp as Forrest Gump. That took forever to do, but now, at least, we got the carburetor tight. We can hook our ball back up, and uh, we'll clean the fuel system and uh, see if we can get fuel happening up at the motor. So to drain the fuel out of this, all I'm gonna do is take the uh, fuel line. I've got 
picked up this guy off of uh, the Snap-on truck years ago. It's for bleak brakes. It's a pressure pot. You hook the airline to it, and it uh, draws the air through. Works for brake fluid. Also works for draining gas. So mine as well. Just drain it from this line. It'll suck out everything that's in there. And we can start from fresh. Oh, uh, oops, I left it on and it looks like it's working a little too good. Um, yeah, that did work pretty good, but if it's got the feature on the trigger, you can lock it so it keeps going. And I did, and went and did something else, and it filled up a little quicker than I thought, and uh, made a bit of a mess. So maybe better off just to uh, let it siphon gravity feed out of there. <laughs> I replaced the fuel line he had, that clear line was rock hard, it actually broke off of the uh, filter that was on there, so I replaced the, put a new filter, new section of line there, and we got uh, some pre-mixed gas ready to go, so yeah, let's see if this thing will flame up. Okay, let's see if she goes, we'll give her the choke, and uh, yeah, come on baby. Like, I cannot believe the recoil rope in this thing is not rope. It is actual steel cable, like winch cable <laughs> off a of four-wheeler. Like, that's... Yeah, you gotta be Paul Bunyan to bust that sucker. Maybe we'll try the electric start instead. All right, well, I was tugging this thing and getting nowhere fast, so I got my booster pack here. We'll uh, clip it onto the uh, battery leads and see... Got an electric start. Let's see if it works. Well, the electric start works, but uh, she's not much of a runner right now. Uh, spark plug, baby. Pulled the spark plug out and she is dry. So we will have to give her a little bit of now normally I would just shoot the brake clean in there, but been catching a lot of flack for that. So we're gonna give her the good stuff, a little bit of Stella. I got some pre-mix in there, so we'll give it a little, little taste of the good stuff. Spill it all over the place, everywhere but in there. Might be a literal fire in the hole. What is the deal?
<laughs> nice one. <laughs> runner, runner, baby. Hey, right, well, the Ski Whiz is a runner, runner, but uh, I don't really know if I could test ride it because it's pretty warm outside. It's kind of muddy out there, and I don't know if Buddy would appreciate me ripping it through the mud, but I kind of want to know if it'll actually move pretty good. It seems to be running all right, you know, but uh, eh, see if it dangles anyway. See what happens here. I mean, not that impressive, but I mean, it does run and move. I, I'm sure in the snow it would be a lot more fun, but uh, that's basically all we can really do with this one right now. So, unfortunately, our winter is over. It's time to uh, move on to other stuff. Motorcycles, maybe. Fargo. Dodge Diesel. Early one. Got a Suburban back there. Put a lift kit in, maybe. Let us know. You know, we're uh, transitioning out of the snow. We're still going to do some grass drags and stuff like that with sleds. Still got to rebuild that ZRT 600 motor. And we'll rip it through the mud and the dirt and grass. But uh, leave a comment and let us know what you want to see us work on next. So there is the possibility. That belongs to my buddy Noel there. He picked this one up. That's got a Cummins diesel in there, four-wheel drive, three-quarter ton. So we got to get that up and running. So we might work on that one if you guys interested in seeing something like that got buddy uh cody's we're gonna call this the the cody planning on putting an ls in there with two turbos and then the old square body suburban she's looking pretty lame and low so i got plans i got a four inch lift kit and some bigger tires fender flares all that that might be the next project i want to start driving that one around so let me know all right, well, had a blast working on this old girl, and uh, you don't see too many, or at least I don't see too many of these kicking around anymore, but uh, this one, she's a runner runner. She's back to life. You know, hopefully I'll call Buddy up. He can take her home and store for the uh, summer months, maybe bring her back. We'll tune it up just before the snow just to make sure she's good to go, but I think right now should be good. As always, uh, thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, you know, leave a comment, hit the like button, and uh, if you're not subscribed, please consider doing so. And as always, take her easy.